General Manager of uh, Big Data, HPC, and IoT for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm very happy to be here. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've been doing recently at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, interestingly, we actually sit, a, sit astride a very large market in terms of high performance computing, as well as a very large market in terms of enterprise computing as well. And so, one of the things that we can do here is actually apply a lot of what we learn on the HPC side into the enterprise side. And so we have the opportunity to actually bring in a lot of HPC, big data and IoT type technologies into the enterprise side and we're, we're starting to do that. Now that can be challenging obviously because there's a lot of customers that don't understand HPC so they don't know how to set it up. It's a very challenging thing for them. So we've really spent a lot of time over the last few quarters or so building solutions from that perspective. And we've actually focused on particular markets where we thought there was a, a, good, a good transition or good proximity for HPC. And so we'll, we'll talk about that here as I go through this. So first of all, as we split the company, so, so we officially split Hewlett Packard in the Hewlett Packard Enterprise, which is the portion that I'm in, and this is focused on solutions for customers doing business from that standpoint. And then HP Inc., which is focused on the personal computing market as well as the printing market. So that happened in November. And as we did this, we looked at what we wanted to do when we grew up. So we had the, the opportunity to basically start with a clean sheet and understand what we really wanted to offer to customers going forward. And what we want to offer to customers is what we call our four transformations. So these, as we talk to a lot of IT professionals in a lot of different segments of the market, they talked about some of the challenges of adapting to what we call the new economy. So this is where you have literally billions of, collect, of connected devices. You've got terabytes and terabytes of data growing exponentially. And you've got, you've got users that are, that are used to a, a level of connectivity that, that uh, has not been provided in the past. So 24 by 7, 365 days a year around the world from that perspective. And so in terms of our four transformations, we, we focus first on a hybrid architecture. So in other words, customers wanted to be able to have a very flexible architecture allowing either being on premise being off-premise or being in some flexible combination between those two. And we want to be able to, even if they were on site, we wanted to give them the sense that they were, they had a large amount of resource that was very readily and flexibly avail available to them as well. So that's one area. So transforming into a hybrid infrastructure. Another area, very important as you have more and more of these connected devices, was essentially uh, protecting the, the, the digital enterprise, so protecting the data, protecting the, the um, service level agreements you have with your end users or with your customers from that standpoint. So another important area that we got feedback uh, that uh, IT professionals were worried about. The next one is empowering a data-driven organization. Um, so this is where HPC to a large extent falls into. So this is where all that data is coming in. How do you get value out of that particular data? And it's really changing a lot of industries. So if you really look at this and think about it, there's been literally industries created overnight because of the, the, uh, the new economy, uh, the digital age, if you will. And other industries have completely disappeared from that standpoint. You know, so, so think of Uber versus the traditional taxi cab and, and all that tension that's been created in that marketplace. An interesting conversation I had, I was at a, a very large automotive company recently, and I was talking to the head of HPC there. And the interesting thing is in the past, he and his team had always been sort of back office at Ford. They were, they were responsible for keeping all the, the machines going, but they weren't really in, in the front office by, by any stretch. But guess what happened? The new economy happened. There's a whole bunch of Ford Fusions running around uploading a bunch of data back into, into headquarters. And suddenly, the C-level executives wanted to get value out of all that data that was going up and actually being able to create 
a driving experience for their customers. So it had moved from basically being a creator of cars to being a creator of a driver experience. And then all of a sudden, that IT professional moved from the back office to actually interacting almost on a weekly basis with the C-level execs. So HPC had actually moved from essentially being a back office capability to being an important part of that enterprise going forward, an important part of actually creating the value ultimately that that automotive company is providing to its customers. So a very interesting change that we're seeing that's being created by this, this, um, this new economy as we go forward. And finally, uh, and I mentioned this a little bit, also work, workplace productivity. So how do you provide the right data at the right time in the right venue for the users and the customers to take advantage of it from that standpoint as well? So that's another, another area that we focused a lot on. So, so again, as I mentioned before, this new age economy, this new economy is bringing in a whole bunch of different data models, getting different customer experiences. We can, we can reach out to our customers in a different way, whether they're, they're programmers, they're, they're users of our mainframes, they're, they're actual end user customers. We can do things like improve our products and operational efficiencies, the productivity I mentioned, and also get, get more insight from that standpoint. And that brings in the, the third part of my responsibility, and that's the Internet of Things. Um, so now we have all these things that are out there from your thermostat to your car to your refrigerator to your cell phone to your laptop that are all generating data that can all be used as a way to either interact with you, create data, um, create new, new experiences for you, and, and all kinds of different things that are happening. And so from the standpoint of, of uh, solution development, now in the past we've had lots of products. So, so Hewlett Packard Enterprise has lots and lots of products. So, I, so I prob there's probably 11 different server lines that uh, we have customers in HPC and, and Big Data choose from. Everything from Blades to Apollo to our Rack products to Moonshot, for example, are all being used to some extent in HPC and Big Data fields. So we'll continue to focus on, on what I call the center, which is optimized hardware and software for the market. But as we go forward, we're spending a lot more time, as I mentioned, building solutions. So making HPC and big data, IoT, much more accessible to more people. So again, being astride the enterprise and the HPC market, we can start to do that as well. And we're doing that. We can't do that all ourselves. We don't understand all the markets. There's too much out there. So we're using a lot of our partners to do that as well. So we have a, a very good partner ecosystem as we go forward. And then finally, we're building a set of advisory services around that core that help customers get up to speed quickly and actually get value out of a lot of the solutions that we provide for them. And so we've really taken an approach of understanding particular workloads. So what are customers working on and what, are, what do they expect to get out of that? Um, and so as a part of this workload analysis, actually building particular solutions, interfacing with customers and our partners, who in some cases understand the workloads better than we do, and coming out of it with optimized architectures in a number of different areas, deep learning, HPC, big data, as well as, well as mobility, and creating a, a number of different offerings, everything from from architectures, so for the customer that, that just wants to buy the equipment themselves and, and they do the work, all the way through things like, um, like modular systems, um, uh, management systems, and, and also um, things that, that uh, provide the glue to, to pull them all together. So let's dive a little bit more into to the products. Um, I won't talk too much about this, because I do want to focus on some of our, our new offerings that, that fit more into the solution space. So from an Apollo standpoint and the Moonshot standpoint, we've got our, our supercomputers that are water-cooled, so that's the Apollo 8000, the 6000, which is our rack-level high-performance computing system, or 2000, which is our, our enterprise HPC product. Now, some customers use that even for very large scale-out type uh, type systems, but it's a very familiar footprint for customers that are just moving into HPC for the first time. So if it's in a standard 19-inch rack, drives are in the front, cables in the rear, has the same kind of management as our 
blades and our Rax products as well. And then, of course, we have our, our Moonshot product, which is focused on particular workloads. So we've had a lot of success around this, especially in, in, uh, um, in uh, a, a video, uh, uh, video on demand type of application. So, so especially, uh, and I'll talk about this later, especially in the financial industry, if you see any picture on CNN or CNBC, you'll see lots of screens out there. And this is something that a moonshot does very well from that perspective. So it can provide video for a lot of users or multiple screens for a single user in a very, very dense and efficient way. And then finally, for big data workloads, our Apollo 4000 product, the the uh, automotive customer I mentioned this morning, they're actually storing all their data on Apollo 4000 at this time that they then analyze through a variety of, of other routines as they go forward. And so again, these built on, these, these build on uh, are the work of a lot of our partners from Intel, Mellanox, Seagate, and so forth, NVIDIA, and an understanding of the various markets as we go forward to, to make sure they're, they're particularly focused. I talked a lot about the 2000 already, so uh, again, a great product for, for institutions or, or businesses that are just getting up to speed and trying to, to understand and adapt quickly into a, an enterprise HPC environment. The 6000, so a lot of customers that are, that are wanting hundreds to thousands of servers are, are uh, enjoying this, this particular platform. And again, this is an air-cooled platform, so uh, it uses things like uh, consolidated power and cooling to get a better TCO for the whole solution. And the Apollo 8000 is, is our product for, for water cooling. Um, so for a customer that wants to have the densest compute, so this actually, of all our products, this has the, the densest from a per rack perspective of anything we offer in the portfolio. And it also has the advantage of what we call dry disconnect, which actually prevents a leak from that standpoint. So a lot of, a lot of patented technology in there to prevent um, a leak and to keep water off, off the particular motherboard. So for customers that are, that are nervous or not accustomed to water in the data center, this is a great solution. Uh, we've got one customer, so, so, so Boeing has actually gone public with us, and, and they're actually using the particular system. Um, and uh, I did a presentation. We have a, a two annual Discover shows for HP, and I was on a panel with, with Boeing from that standpoint. And so you know, they're, they're looking at the perspective of not really having, uh, needing a data center, basically using these platforms in essentially what they call a Boeing barn, which is just a structure and then they can basically bring in the, uh, the hardware without having to build a typical uh, crack units and all the other parts that, that we're familiar with with a data center. Of course, the Moonshot platform. Um, so we have a variety of different cartridges. So adapted partic for particular workloads, everything from Atom through FPGAs through DSP type uh, uh, cartridges from Texas Instruments as an example. And we've recently introduced a lot of Xeon-based cartridges. So, so with, the, with the earlier types of cartridges, they, they tend to be very focused in particular areas. But now with the Xeon-based cartridges, we're seeing a lot of, of uptake as we go forward. Um, so, so both for, as I mentioned, uh, 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 mobility-type applications, so, so streaming video, um, uh, computer screens, these sorts of things as well, and all the way to HPC. So some folks are using these for, for running HPC workloads as well. And then, it, then our 4000 product is specifically focused around big data. So it's a, it's a, it's a big data workhorse from that standpoint. It can store lots of data. Um, so this is uh, server-based storage. So from a uh, storage perspective, our 4200 is similar to the 2000 in the fact that it's a very familiar enterprise footprint, so it fits in a standard rack with uh, standard cable access and those sorts of things. It, it's a, it uh, actually holds up to a quarter petabyte in that 2U from that standpoint. Um, so a tremendous amount of storage in a very familiar space. The 4510 is sp specifically used for object storage. So we had, uh, a few months ago, we made an investment in Scality, which is the object storage software. And so this is typically where 
where Scality is housed from that standpoint. So, so quite a number of customers are using that as an object storage solution as they go forward. So as, as a flash storage, which is, which is very close to the processor, um, and uh, object storage starts to squeeze out more standard storage, then you see scale-out storage becoming more popular. And I'll talk about, we, we, we recently introduced the, uh, the Apollo 4520, which is our platform that we're using specifically for Lustre. And I'll talk about that more in a second. And then finally, what's new? Well, first of all, we, uh, we introduced a deep, deep learning solution. Um, so it's not purely about, about hardware itself, but we also had uh, a number of software developments going on in our HP labs, which we, we used to call COGX, so you might have heard of it before. So it's a, it's a deep learning toolkit that has a familiar, a familiar interface. So if you're used to MATLAB or R, for example, you would have some familiarity or see some, some, uh, some commonality with that. And it's a way to get very quickly up to speed in, in, uh, in doing deep learning as you go forward. And so we've actually rolled that together into what we call the Cognitive Computing Toolkit. And it's going to be available in the open source. Um, so it will be available uh, the middle of this month, actually, just a, you know, a few days away from that standpoint. You can actually go in there and start to play with deep learning. And it's the first part of, again, a solution that uh, at the top is, is uh, COGX, the, the, or the, the Cognitive Computing Toolkit, it's hard to say that. And at the bottom is our, our, latest, uh, our latest dense uh, accelerator product. Um, so the Apollo 6500, we, we just announced, we showed it last week at the uh, NVIDIA GTC con conference, and it can house up to, to eight uh, accelerators. They can be GPUs, they can be Knight's Landing, uh, so a variety of there. We've got some customers looking at uh, actually putting in um, uh, uh, dense um, uh, SSDs in there as well from that perspective. And so I talked a little bit about this. So up at the top, the cognitive, uh, the cognitive computing toolkit. We've had a number of, of enhancements around our cluster management. And then finally, our Apollo 6500 is a dense GPU product as we go forward. So the other thing we announced is a, a solution built around our 4520 product that I mentioned previously. So uh, the 4520 is a, is a 4U uh, server with up to two two uh, Xeon-based motherboards inside of it and a lot of disk drives. And so we announced a solution that's, that's, uh, that's the Intel Enterprise Edition Luster, IEEL as it's called, on the top layer with the 4520 in the bottom layer from a hardware perspective. Let's see. And so again, basically Luster up top, um, we've got uh, uh, again, our, our cluster management capability, and finally the 4520 on the bottom. It offers, again, it's a, it's a reference architecture. It's not, a, it's not an appliance, so it offers a lot of flexibility in terms of what kind of processors you want, how much memory you want. You want one motherboard, two motherboards. What kind of uh, you know, resiliency do you want based upon the number of motherboards you have? So a lot of flexibility in terms of that solution. So it, it, it basically fits in a different place than, uh, for example, the Seagate Cluster Store, which we also offer, uh, but a much more flexible type of, uh, type of environment. And, and third of all, uh, we've got a number of solutions that are specifically focused on markets. So this is where I mentioned previously where we've been going out talking to specific customers in specific markets. And the first one that we've done a, a lot of work in, and we've been focusing on oil and gas, financial services, government, uh, and also life sciences. And the first place we've had a lot of success and we're actually announcing solutions for is in the financial services area. Um, so, so a number of these, these solutions, one is uh, a risk compliant archive solution. Um, so all those transactions that happen at uh, any financial house need to be stored. They need to be stored in a particular safe way. So that's what the compliance piece of this is is involved with. And so, so we built a solution based upon Scality that I mentioned earlier, and Eternity, which is a, a software layer that actually handles that compliancy as well. So that's the first solution. The next solution is based around Moonshot. It's what we call the Trader Workstation. So again, this replaces a lot of those workstations that were, that were under the trader's desks and now provides in the data center one server that can support uh, up to 
um, I think it's 60 or 80 screens at one time. Um, so uh, in a 4U chassis from that standpoint. Um, and then find the trade and match server solution. So that's where they're actually trying to match trades that have happened with actually transactions that need to be processed in the, in the back end from that standpoint. So, so uh, that's where, where low latency is very important in that particular solution. So you know, a little bit more detail. So starting with, uh, with the, the trade and match solution in, in, high, in high frequency trading. So again, what you're trying to do is reduce the latency as servers talk to each other and manage transactions. And so in this particular case, what we're doing is we've actually given customers instructions in, in terms of how to overclock their processors. Um, so this is a single, single socket type offering. And we've actually had some customers that are, that are running up in the, the four and a half gigahertz from that standpoint and still being stable. Um, so obviously, it depends on their code, it depends on their, their work environment, but uh, you know, a great example where we're, we're providing a, a very low latency solution for that particular portion of the marketplace.